Hello everybody, this is me, Chris. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different from what I've been doing before. Uh, yesterday or a couple days ago I put up a few videos about some uh, encryption and some hashing, but um, I was going to continue on encryption today, but before that I just wanted to give a quick demonstration on uh, SQL injection, which a lot of people who are web developers or who are maybe in the hacking community might already be aware of which is uh, it takes advantage of a poor programmer um, in the sense that it do the programmer itself doesn't actually validate the user's input um, as a lot of people know who uh, program defensively or just program to make a secure website uh, you always want to validate any kind of user input that the user may put uh, through the web page such as a username login because uh, most people, of course, are not going to try to do anything maliciously, but there's always going to be a few people who are going to just uh, push some websites buttons and see if they actually have um, vulnerabilities. And uh, of course, a lot of people are aware of the terms white hat, gray hat, black hat, and uh, the black hats are the ones we got to be concerned about. But um, for the most part, the program, the code is all already done. I'm not going to be doing anything from scratch. Uh, I have an ASP.NET um, C Sharp application, and um, it's not looking perfect. I didn't want to do anything spectacular because it takes a while to design a page. But I just wanted to kind of just show uh, a week uh, a basic page here. Of course, there's nothing wow about it, but uh, just ignore everything else. Uh, this is just and like any other website where the developer wants to have a username or a password for somebody to log in. All these other labels I have here are just for debugging purposes while I was just creating this. But um, so I have this attached, or I have this program connected to a, a MySQL, MySQL um, server database, and I actually have that server over here just to install on my own computer. I have. SQL workbench and I just have for this fake website for this purposes I just have these fake accounts and uh, they're not related to anybody in uh, that I know of so everything is purely coincidental here but um and also just ignore the fact that none of this is is a uh, hash or encrypted for salts and for password salts you obviously want things to be hashed and uh, or encrypted but um, just for this demonstration, it really doesn't matter. But um, just to kind of show you how this works, um, the back end of the code actually just compares the user's input for the username, for example, J. Smith. And if the person puts in Smith2001, um, it just says the SQL string just says, all right, well, the username equals and that the piece word salted equals this then the person will log into the website so if we just do that real quick j smith uh, smith 2001 again there's nothing fancy don't laugh too much hello john okay nothing special there log out but um, as people know sql server or sql injection um, there's a whole bunch of injection attack te techniques that people can do XML injecting and uh, I think there's also LDAP injection but uh, for a very simplistic um, example here if you'll notice we have F. Larson, J. Smith and P. R. P. R. Uh, for this basic attack to work you don't even need to put anything uh, actually on the uh, username. It doesn't have to actually be a username in the database, just fake user1. What's important here is the actual password, or it could also be using a username, but um, as long as you use this text, and there's different variations, there's some uh, SQL servers that actually don't, you can actually just use a uh, integer without these actual ticks here, but um, by doing that and submitting look we were able to get in why because on the users or at least on the developer side of things they weren't actually validating the user's input you always want to check for every user's input text box uh, 
whatever. You just want to make sure that the person is not trying to enter anything maliciously. And there are several ways you can actually protect against SQL injection. Um, one of those things being in the code itself. Let me just go here. I'm not going to go over everything here, but um, in the actual, here's the submit event. One of the things you can actually do here that will prevent uh, SQL injection is actually to have validate the user's input versus uh, just a regular expression list. You want to have a white list of stuff that uh, the, the user is allowed to input. For example, if you just want it to be lowercase capital letters, uh, also just numbers, you can actually have a regular expression. For example, what I have up here, that'll check for that. And if there's anything outside of this, for example, ticks that, can, that is actually used for SQL in tax, um, basically it'll return false and it won't even try to access the data. So it won't even call the function, um, if I actually delete this, Let me stop this. If I delete this, if it captures a tick, it's going to return false. It's not even going to call the actual database which tries to connect to the person or a person's uh, user login profile. So if we just do this real quick, let me just rerun it and try to do the same thing. First off, let me go with someone legitimate like uh, last time J Smith Smith 2001 11 it would get him fine why because there was nothing erroneous about the input but if you just want to do something fake user again notice it didn't do anything um, Typically, you would just want to put just a generic message saying uh, wrong username password. You don't want to be specific about the error message because you don't want to let the hacker know exactly what you have in terms of security. But uh, just a generic uh, mistyped username password uh, would help prevent a, a person to actually use this. So again, uh, if you remember the regular expression, it only checked for lowercase letters uppercase letters and numbers but if you noticed here there's an equal sign there's a space there's tick signs so it returned false so that function wasn't even called to actually uh, try to connect to the database but another way to actually prevent this and it's actually a good idea to do both of these but just for this uh, quick demonstration let me just crap keep forgetting to stop the program let me just comment this out. Another thing you want to do is uh, in the actual code itself, um, here's the actual SQL string. Um, select all from the database where the username equals such and password equals such. And uh, just by adding the tick mark, it actually closed off this and the or one equals one the database or the, the program interpreted that to be an actual uh, or one equals one which always returns true which means the person was able to hack into the database and your database is compromised but uh, you can actually do more security with this for example if you actually put your query string as such and after cre uh, creating the new instance of the SQL command you can add in these two lines of code afterwards again in actual practice you want to hash these uh, passwords you don't want to just pass in the plain text but this is just for demonstrational purposes and uh, with these two lines of code you effectively also uh, prohibit I don't want to say 100% of the time, but this greatly reduces their ability to actually hack in using SQL attacks. So keep in mind, we took away the regular expressions checking. We're going to run it again.
first. Let's try to get in legitimately. We're able to get in. Hello, John. Now let's do the same thing. Now let's just use John Smith again. Uh, let's try the same SQL injection. Type in correct username and or password. And that I probably should have had that uh, also displayed when you check for the regular expression. But as you can see here, uh, by adding, by changing the code that actually accepts, puts the query string together. If you create it as such, and then within the SQL command object variable after creating the new MySQL command with the, with the query string and the connection string you can actually add for the uname space add in the username and for the salted password you add in the password text and effectively this actually treats that string entry as just a string entry it doesn't try to actually um, if, if you just use this other query string, whatever was passed in here, it would actually try to pass it in as a SQL command. So OR1 equals 1 would return true. The SQL database will interpret that and give the hacker access to your database. But by creating it as such, um, it's just plain string text and it doesn't accept. So you want to actually include the regular expressions check with that and another security thing that's always good to have is uh, least privileges so with your SQL server or MySQL you always want to have an account uh, when the user logs in to have least privileges you don't want to have just one account for the database that just allows um, any user to have all kinds of access, um, you know, updating and most importantly deleting tables and information. Um, so it's a quick tutorial right there, a quick example. Again, the website page wasn't the, the prettiest, but uh, you could spend a long time trying to make any web page, web page pretty, but uh, without that basic knowledge about preventing uh, SQL injection doesn't matter how pretty your page is uh, your website your business is not gonna last very long so that's all